everyone. Um, Hi everyone, um, my name is Chandrani. I'm from Adobe security uh, team. So I'm an adversary intel engineer at Adobe. So this presentation is about, sorry. Are you able to hear me now? Okay. Yeah, so this presentation is about um, the career transition journey that, that I went through at Adobe like different security roles I had, and what all I learned, what's been the transition journey like. So the agenda is simple. I joined Adobe as an um, application security researcher, and then I moved on last year as a data-driven adversary intel engineer. So what has been the pain and gain, what all I have learned in both these two roles, and what are the challenges that I have faced? Uh, before going into, um, okay, one second, it's not in. One second. Um, standing on the shoulder of giants, so basically, um, whatever I'm going to present, whatever I'm going to talk today is based on the work and the knowledge that I have uh, acquired from my past experience and also based on many scholar work in this domain. However, the opinions are of my own and they are based on my perception of security. So I joined Adobe as an application security researcher. Um, prior to this, I was at Oracle primarily as a security developer. So um, at Adobe, I was <coughs> responsible for uh, primarily doing threat modeling. So basically, we, we would be assigned a product line uh, for, like, for the Adobe products, and we would, uh, whenever any fe the product is going through any feature change, any new, uh, any new modifications, we would look at the architecture diagram and we would perform stride uh, for that particular service. And then uh, we would proactively try to find out like uh, what are the security controls that we can place. As part of it, um, as a um, uh, part of my work, I, we would also do some light pen testing. Like for example, if something looks alarming to us, we would ask for a sandbox environment, and then we, we would do some hands-on testing. And um, uh, also as part of that role, it comes like at Adobe, there are various different security teams who does various, various different types of testing. Uh, like for example, pen testing, there is bug bounty hunter. So we are responsible for looking at all those results and prioritize them and telling the product teams, okay, this is the one that you should look at today than tomorrow. So it's basically giving a holistic view to the product teams, a holistic security guidance. And apart from this, it's not there in the slide, so, oh, oops, it's not in presentation mode. Uh, uh, apart from this, what uh, we are also encouraged to write some uh, automation scripts that can find security issues at scale. However, the story behind the curtain is um, whatever we do, it's more like a governance driven. That means like we are we were not looking at the data per se, like where the adversary interest is going, where um, what are the vulnerabilities they are trying to uh, exploit, but it is more like one size fits all kind of an attitude. At the time the process was at Adobe, it was hard to scale in the sense like uh, the product teams, they would uh, submit a request, it would be triaged to one of our queues, and then uh, based on the priority, we, we would pick it up. Um, and uh, we have tried to employ the uh, um, uh, certain mechanisms to, so that the process becomes seamless. But then it was, there was a lot of uh, you know, manual work involved in the process and it was not completely automated at that time. 
And uh, there is a little room for automation because always there is a huge pile of this review request would come in. And so we will have really less time to go put in some extra time and do some automation um, from uh, our, on our own. So while all this was going on, like for about three years, um, uh, about last year, there was a major org change going on at Adobe. So <clears throat> this was uh, like about uh, uh, where in like since March 2022. So in inside the security, a lot of revamp was happening, and uh, we were all hearing that a new team is going to form. That's called Adversary Intel team. So the team had a lot of cool promises that we will look at, uh, you know, we will do data-driven cybersecurity, we will look at adversary interest signals, um, things like that. And I spoke to the manager a couple of times, and I understood that whatever the team is going to work on, probably I have no knowledge about it. I, have not, I do not have any past experience, but I still <laughs> join the team with a lot of courage. But the transition path has not been uh, very smooth. I still remember um, the first workshop we had as a team. Like it was initially like a just a three-member team, most of us from AppSec background in mm, Adobe, and we were just discussing like how a different mindset we need to have because from AppSec we uh, look at it like security best practices, what's industry uh, best practice, things like that. But then here, we are going to look at data, and then we are going to try to empower uh, the product teams based on the data trends. So it's going to be a completely different mindset. There needed a steep learning curve. Uh, the soon I attended the workshop, soon I, ha I was having more meetings, I understood that where <laughs> I'm going to more, and it needed a very steep learning curve. And then this feeling like, will I be able to do it? Am I making the right choice? Oh my God, so things like that. Stepping out of my comfort zone was not easy because um, when I understood like what all new skills I have to learn, the list was long. I mean, here everything is probably not listed because it will, it will go on and on. I had to understand how to write programmatically data schema what are the industry norms? What are the best practices? What are the uh, most common attributes I need to have? I needed to learn uh, the methods of storing and processing data, the efficient method, what's the data platform being used. I had taken a few machine learning courses in, in my grad days, but then it needed a major uh, revamp. I needed a major brush up, same for querying skills. And visualization, I had no experience at all. So, yeah, things didn't happen overnight. Um, so um, at Adobe, we have this, uh, we have Azure subscription. So Databricks was an obvious choice. We started learning anything and everything that we could um, on Databricks, like uh, uh, LinkedIn learning, Coursera learnings, wherever we took paid learning. So uh, how the uh, Databricks underlying architecture works, that uh, distributed Spark data structure works, how, uh, when you uh, uh, submit a job, how it goes through uh, the various nodes, and because when you face an error, you need to understand those underlying architecture so that you can deal with it. Then we learned PySpark. I, I wouldn't go through all of this, but yeah, machine learning, I uh, took a course, again, that is offered by Stanford, uh, by Andrew Ng. Uh, data storytelling also, we took a uh, paid course. So for each of this, and it's not like, okay, we are given three months time, complete all and come back. It's like a continuous process in our team, like learn and deliver, learn and deliver. So enough of learning, now show me some work. <laughs> Adobe is not just paying me to just to learn, I have to deliver something. So the pro first project that we did was, um, as I was saying, that there are multiple security teams at Adobe. And um, like they are capturing various test results, right? There is pen testing team, there is dynamic testing, um, someone is running Wireshark tool. So there are multiple attributes that they are cap capturing in multiple ways. So we wanted a one-stop solution so that we can see the trends of data, how it is going, where the adversary, where we should focus more, where we should tell the product teams, okay, this is more important than this area. 
So we came up with this problem statement that uniformly captures security data and have a single source of truth for all security issues at Adobe. So for this, um, we built an automated pipeline that works as a single source of truth. The first stage was uh, the data ingestion. For data ingestion, we um, um, sat with the six different teams, uh, testing teams. We understood what all attributes they're capturing, understood like uh, what all we need to keep the common one. And then in the data processing layer, <coughs> In Azure Databricks, uh, uh, we are doing more data refining. So in Databricks, there is a concept of uh, bronze, silver, and gold. So bronze is like, uh, it's like the raw data, the input that you are getting from all the, um, uh, the like the raw input from the teams. Then you do some, um, <laughs> Uh, some filtering, some deduplication of the data, some processing, you add timestamp, things like that, that you call the silver data. And then finally, you, you add maybe some machine learning uh, algorithm on top of it, um, maybe some um, aggregation logic, and that you write to the Databricks Delta table. So that becomes our final aggregation, and um, we connect it to uh, the uh, Power BI desktop client to uh, put a nice graphical structure out of it. So coming to the implementation part, uh, for the schema definition, I used um, Python, uh, Python Pydantic library. So basically, that lets you uh, create a self-validating schema. So for example, if, you have, if uh, someone has uh, given a schema in JSON or CSV, if, if an attribute is not matching whatever is there in the schema, it would complain. It will, uh, before you are submitting, it would complain and say that correct it. So in the next process, all these test results, uh, so then the teams were automatically sending it to, uh, to different storage accounts that we had set up. And these storage accounts, again, we had uh, securely connected um, through mount locations um, to uh, Databricks. And in Databricks, we had autoloaders running. So autoloaders are nothing but, you can say, like a program that would uh, programmatically pick up your um, uh, your files from the mount location that you have uh, set, and it will process that file uh, however you have mentioned, uh, add some uh, more details to it, like uh, file uh, timestamp or yearly, um, uh, yearly data and things like that. And it also has some, uh, like, like, lot of advantages, like it has this fail-safe uh, mechanism, for example, like, if you are expecting a column that, but that is not there, it would add a extra column or as a comment, as an extra column, and it would go on to the next column. So it doesn't error out immediately. And then finally, we write everything to the delta table, and then we connect it to the uh, visualization layer, which is the Power BI. So this was the report we generated. This was very well appreciated, and uh, we also shared this with our customer. The next project that we did was, um, currently, we are um, at Adobe. We are also working on uh, a concept called as like adversary persona. Like uh, there are different attackers, and they employ different uh, uh, attack techniques, tools, uh, things like that. And uh, so, for example, for there, there is a researcher persona, right, who are employing certain different techniques. Then phishing persona is there. Bug bounty hunter is there. So we wanted to see like. <clears throat> And what is at our discretion is a long text description uh, where that, is, that comes with the attack tactics and the techniques. Like we have the SCC, uh, maybe from the SCC team, we are getting this description, or it's, if it's a bug bounty hunter, we are uh, getting the uh, Jira ticket description, like what all um, payloads they used, what all steps they used. What we wanted to find out is uh, from this text, we wanted to see if there is any similarity among all these personas. So uh, we wanted to develop a text-based clustering algorithm that captures the similarity of these attack methods uh, by employed by different persona. Um, so here also, uh, I have like placed a text that is not related to any of the um, things that we have used. Like basically, we uh, run the pre-processing steps. So we do the lemmatization, we do the stop words removal, and then we get a process text. 
Finally, we do, uh, next step is we do the vectorization method. So here I pick the ward to vec vectorization method that applies the CBOW that's called like continuous bag of words. So basically you give a word and based on the vectors that comes up, it gives you the nearest neighbor for that word. And on top of that, we apply the k-means clustering algorithm to get some segmentations like uh, of the adversary personas. So this was the second project, like this was also a very well appreciated project that we did. The third project was uh, we picked um, a single persona, a specific persona, and we wanted to see like uh, what are the most common TTPs and vulnerabilities they are using. Like single persona, depending on the um, system, depending on the product they're attacking, they can employ different, various different tactics, right? And so we wanted to see um, which one, which vulnerability they are using the most. And again, at our discretion was a long security incident that we are getting from various vendors maybe, or uh, from the SEC description that we have the footprints. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this was our problem statement. Here, we did not go through the machine learning route, but we went the advanced data processing route and the advanced query language route. After uh, getting the data in the data frame, we did some deduplication logic and initial data processing. But then if you see the third, uh, uh, the fourth row over here on the right-hand side, it has everything clubbed up, like MITRE attack ident identifiers are also coming together, then ransomware, the adversary names are also coming together. So second, uh, the next step that we did was the data normalization. So wherein uh, we would normalize the data so that each of those become one single column. Here, like in this one is uh, only the TTP is one column, then I have CVEs. So these are again like JSON arrays. Then we would uh, take those JSON array and then we would use the pipe, um, PySpark uh, SQL functions like we have ex uh, used explode to uh, you know, make it into different rows so that we can write the aggregate function on top of it and we can see like which one was the topmost one and uh, do our aggregation on that. So story behind the curtain is, uh, it has not been very smooth, right? Like uh, there has been days where I have faced Databricks errors, has no, uh, I have no clue uh, how to deal with it. Uh, searched in the internet or maybe reached out to the MS uh, some ticket ra raised uh, service ticket with them. Uh, for machine learning, there is always a plethora of information available, but choosing the one that, that will work for you and obtaining accuracy has always been a challenge. Like, um, this is still we are learning and developing. And um, the team that we are on, like, it is very much like uh, startup setup, like we have to continuously learn and deliver, like it is at a very fast pace. Um, the key takeaways is, I think, <laughs> it takes courage uh, to come out of your comfort zone, you know, and then uh, do something new. But I feel it is worth taking the risk if you are putting your soul to it, if you really want something um, to do it, like, Put your uh, dedication to it and you will see the light end of the tunnel. Different perspective of security is equally important. Like initially I was doing as an application security researcher, threat modeling, architecture review. So that is also a very important security exercise in the product sec uh, security life cycle. As well as the data driven security piece that we are working on now, looking at the adversary interest signal that gives a whole new perspective like where adversaries are going after. And it's not always that you have to change jobs, you know, to go to a whole new exciting role. You can be in the same company and uh, work at uh, different roles. And these are the, some of the certifications and trainings that I have completed. Um, and yeah, that's all. Any questions?
asking about the transition journey or are you asking about the project that we have done? That's a very good question. Like for example, um, let's take the example of Photoshop, right? So for Photoshop, when we um, ap applied these techniques, we saw the adversary interest signal. There is a lot of domain squatter problems. There is a lot of phishing problems. So we are telling uh, uh, we are telling the teams, okay, go focus more on those areas. Uh, right, so we are able to, I think, because security is vast, and often when we um, tell the product teams, okay, you have to do this, you have to do this, so that that also increases their worth. So, but then when we are giving them a very focused direction, I think that is helping them as well, because we are telling them with data, so that is giving them some proof as well. Okay, uh, we have this data that uh, th this much vulnerability has been exploited for this product, so you should definitely go look at it. So I think that is helping. Does that answer your question? how we should be doing it, but now we are questioning about what we should go after, right? So that question we are trying to solve first, then uh, how we should be doing it. And uh, sorry for not being on the presentation mode, I couldn't really fix it. Uh, this was my first presentation, so yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>